We have a visitor. Are you here to help me? Are you here to help, Bibs? Or just watch? She's just here to watch. Good morning. It is day three of doing this tutorial. <laughs> I had originally wanted this to be kind of like a proper tutorial step-by-step -step thing, but I think it's turning into more of a vlog tutorial style. I don't know if you guys are okay with that. Um, I hope you guys are still sticking with me. Again, it's day three. I tried wearing the same thing yesterday for continuity's sake because I thought it would be done, but anyway, here we are. Totally different outfit. Wearing my Ogden cami and, and my Zinnia skirt. So, Whole handmade wardrobe and then here in the back is what we are currently working on this is the brumby skirt and it's not obviously it's not done yet we still have to install the zipper uh, finish the waistband and hem the bottom of the skirt so that is where we are uh, right now so I hope you guys are having fun and following along with me let's let's get cracking shall we all right guys I messed up again if you've been following along and are totally confused why I skipped this step uh, I just I missed it I completely missed it and I apologize uh, in case you're completely confused but anyway the pattern after the after we attached the back part of the skirt to the front part of the skirt, we were supposed to iron on, or I was supposed to iron on, um, a strip of interfacing to on either side of the back seam at the top uh, to reinforce the zipper, which we are going to currently install now. Um, so I just went ahead and clipped out a inch and a quarter by eight inches of fusible interfacing, ironed it on to both sides of the skirt on the wrong side, um, and now I have my zipper. The pattern actually calls for a nine inch or 22 centimeter zipper. However, I only had a seven inch or 18 centimeter zipper in my stash, so I'm just gonna work with those numbers and adjust where necessary. So the pattern wants me to mark off a nine inch by, um, a nine by seven eighths of an inch or 25 centimeter rectangle around the interfacing and then go over it with basting stitches. Uh, but because I have a seven inch zipper uh, or 18 centimeter zipper, I'm going to mark off a 21 centimeter rec rectangle. So I'm going to use this handy ruler here, which if you are into sewing, this is kind of a must, I want to say. Um, but the pattern says to mark off a seven eighth. So that's right, one eighth right under an inch. So I'm just going to mark off that using some Taylor's chalk. I marked off from here down, and this is seven inches and seven eighths of an inch right here. And we're just gonna take this over to the machine and do some basting stitches along there. And that's gonna help guide our stitches uh, when it comes to stitching on the zipper. All right, so I took this to the machine and I added my basting stitches along the lines that I made with the chalk. Uh, so you can see it on this side. It's uh, just, it gives you a guideline uh, to follow when you're going to install the zipper. And I did it to this side as well. And the next instructions say to clip towards the angle that you created uh, at the pivot when you took it up to your machine. So this little corner that's created right here, you're gonna clip that at a 45 degree angle and being careful not to clip into your stitches. And then we're gonna take this over to the ironing board and fold it and press that way. And then we're gonna seam up the back of the skirt, leaving this part open for the zipper. All right, so this is what the back of your skirt should look like now. Uh, I gave my seams a nice clean press and the back of the skirt is open, ready to install the zipper and we're gonna cover that next. Okay, this part's a little tricky, I'm not gonna lie, but if you've done your basting stitches, you'll notice this horizontal basting line. You're gonna take your zipper uh, upside down with the pull tab facing down towards the hemline and lie it right, right sides together, and you're gonna butt that end piece of the zipper right below that horizontal basting stitch line and then you are going to stitch across 
to secure it in place. Okay, this part's a little tricky, but here's how I have it set up under my machine. Again, you want your fabric to lie flat under the machine as much as possible. Um, and you're just going to, you have to eyeball this a little bit, but know that this part of the zipper is butt up against those basting stitches. So you're just gonna get as close to that metal piece as you can without going over the metal piece. Uh, and you don't wanna go all the way across, you just wanna go across those basting stitches. So I'm just gonna stitch to where this needle is and stop right there. And of course you wanna back tack on either side. All right, see what I did there? So I couldn't really film it without the camera shaking, so sorry I couldn't really film the sewing process, but I was able to stitch just across that part right there and that should do the trick. Okay, now that we have our zipper in place, we are going to flip it up and then everything, everything should line up. It doesn't, we will troubleshoot that. So that looks good. And then here it kind of puckers a little bit and it just, I, that just means that I stitched a little too far to the edge of <laughs> the, uh, the basting line. So I'm just gonna take my little handy dandy uh, seam ripper. I can always go in and secure this later and just kind of like unpick some of that. And then the instructions say to follow the basting stitches, but honestly, I don't see how that's possible. Maybe I'm reading the directions wrong, but the way I'm gonna attach this, I'm just gonna sew um, a border around as close as I can, maybe uh, an eighth of an inch away from the edge of these basting stitches to secure the, the zipper in place. And we should be good to go. And also you wanna make sure that your gather your gather lines the waistband matches up so if it doesn't you can always do a little bit of finagling so <laughs> if you've made it this far uh, your zipper should look like this so I've pinned the fabric about a quarter of an inch away from the center zip and now I'm just gonna take this over to the machine and stitch about like an eighth of an inch all around here and when you come to the corners if you uh, if you're new to sewing and you're not really sure how to pivot when you come to that corner over there you want to make sure your needles down lift your foot and then turn your work and then stitch down do the same put your foot down lift your foot turn your work and put your foot back down and then stitch along the other edge and if you want before you actually stitch it in place you can actually unzip this and give your skirt a try on to make sure things are looking good that they fit and all that jazz um although we do have to add the other side of the skirt waistband after this is done so yeah let's take it over to the machine oh and it, when you are sewing this on you may want to keep this unzipped to help you better maneuver the fabric Zipper is installed, and at first glance it looks it looks decent, <laughs> but if you really look, yeah, I'm not too pleased about that. Um, I might I might rip it out because my sewing machine ended up doing something really wonky while I was sewing. I don't know, it's just doing like all these curly cue things. Like look at that, it's like thread barf. I'm not really sure what, what happened there, but from the outside, I think it looks okay. So I'm not too concerned about it. I might go back after I'm done with the skirt and correct that this later as well. Um, but for now, the, the zipper is stable, it's in there, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried. I can fix that. Um, but next up, we are going to finish things off with the waistband, and then, and then, we get to hem the skirt. And then we're done. We're done, guys. So next we are taking our remaining waistband piece that we've stitched together. Uh, and then we are going to fold and press the edges in at the ends, one inch or 2.5 centimeters, uh, one side and then on the other side. And then we're gonna turn up the, the bottom of the waistband about 5 eighths of an inch. And then we're going to stitch uh, the other side to the top of the other waistband on that's already attached to the skirt. So let's go do that. So I've gone ahead and pressed my seams on the remaining waistband piece. Now we're going to attach this edge of the waistband to this edge of the waistband and we're just going to pin it in place. And yeah, we're just gonna go all the way around and we're gonna try and have our notches match up and our seams match up and all that good stuff and doesn't match exactly, 
don't be too hard on yourself. Let's see if, it's always like a game of Russian roulette, whether, especially like with working with slippery fabric, I'm like, is it gonna match up? Is it not gonna match up? But it seems like things are matching up quite nicely. Yeah, the seams are gonna sandwich together. Um, and you wanna just feel those seams kind of click into place, if that makes sense. Uh, to make sure they're nice and even. Uh, I find it helps to pin on either side of a pressed open seam, just to make sure when these go through the machine, it's not gonna flip up or get caught or anything. It just adds some extra insurance there. Okay, so we're gonna take this over to the machine and stitch 5 eighths away from the edge and then flip things over. So remember how I said I wasn't happy with the top stitching around the zipper? So I went ahead and I unpicked that and tried to smooth things out. But it, if I wanted things to lie flat, this part right here would be a little wonky and I'm not sure I could put up with that. I don't know, I wanted things to look even and symmetrical. So if it means me living with this little tiny tuck right here, that should kind of hopefully smooth out a little bit once all the pins are out and everything's tacked down. Um, it should be fine, and I think it's a mistake that I can live with. Um, but yeah, again, I'm still learning. I'm not a huge fan of this fabric. Uh, you know, if you guys have made it this far, give yourselves a pat on the back. Hopefully your zipper looks a lot better than mine. Uh, but I'm gonna take this back to the machine and kind of just give this another stitch around and hopefully it'll it'll be good to go and then we can finish this up. Okay, so I took it back to the machine and I unpicked all my previous stitches and restitched the top stitching. You can see here it's not perfect. It's a kind of a sad little mistake. Uh, it has a little tuck right here, but overall it's a mistake I can live with and from far away I don't think you're really gonna notice it unless you have a magnifying glass on our if you're that if you're that close to my butt you probably shouldn't be there in the first place but anyway <laughs> I digress so now it's time to finish the waistband and as you can see I've already stitched uh, 5 eighths of an inch uh, both waistband pieces together so this is really just gonna fold over and then we can whip stitch the band into place um, however I am actually going to, however, I'm actually going to trim down the seam allowance again to eliminate any bulk that could occur. The directions don't say to, to uh, trim down the seam allowance, but I'm just going to go ahead and do that because I'm, I'm used to doing that. And again, I don't want any bulk in the waistband. All right, so I'm going to come over here and unzip this. And before we finish the waistband, I'm actually going to trim down my seam allowance over here. The instructions don't tell you to trim your seam allowance, but I'm going to go do that anyway because I want to eliminate any bulk that um, could occur in the waistband. So I'm just gonna take my pinking shears. You can take regular trimmers or anything, but I like, I, I think pinking shears are fun. So I'm just gonna come in here and just trim that down about a quarter of an inch. Actually, I think I need new pinking shears. These are kind of wonky. So we're gonna switch to regulars. Um, and pinking shears, I guess, will add some extra insurance you know, because it prevents, fr the little zigzags prevent fraying, but I'm just gonna go all around the waistband. And again, be careful not to catch any of the main fabric that's supposed to be in the skirt. <laughs> and because, again, you don't have to, this is not necessary, but because it is a curved waistband, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna come in here and clip the edges a little bit, just randomly around into the seam allowance, but not cutting obviously into my stitches. This will just help ease any curves and stuff when you fold, when you flip it over. Any curved edge, I just like to give it a little trim or clipping. So we're gonna flip this over now and give this a good press. And then we're gonna whip stitch our waistband into place. So before I <laughs> hand stitch the waistband to the skirt, I am actually gonna do some under stitching to help this seam lie flat. Cause if you look at it right here, it's still a little bubbly. And if I just hand tack it down, this is gonna be a little bit wonky up here. So I'm just gonna take this over to the machine, make sure that my seam allowance is pressed up towards the wrong side of the waistband. Um, and when I bring it under the machine, I'm gonna make sure that that seam is lying again underneath the wrong side of the waistband. 
And I'm just gonna stitch about an eighth of an inch along this seam line right here. And that'll help, um, that'll help the seam lie flat as it can. So when you flip it over this way, it'll have a nice, clean, crisp edge. And again, I'm just gonna sew an eighth of an inch away from this line right here. And the way I usually do that, I usually follow the lines on my presser foot. I usually follow the lines on my presser foot. Um, so there's like a line right here that I just, you know, use as a guideline. It doesn't have to exactly be an eighth of an inch, but, um, you know, you can eyeball it, but I find those little lines helpful little, <laughs> um, helpful little tools. And you can actually um, put a little pressure, like pull, not too much, but you can actually pull the fabric apart ever so slightly. And you wanna make sure that you feel your seam underneath lying flat against the wrong side of the waistband. I'm just gonna go. And you wanna stop periodically just to make sure that your fabric's under there. It's gonna go all the way around. So I added the understitching and look how nice that looks. It's nice and clean and pressed. Uh, now we can come underneath here and start pinning our waistband in place. Yeah, that looks really, really good. So glad I did the understitching. Now you can either stitch in the ditch on the right side. I They do make stitch in the ditch um, uh, presser foots that will go right into the ditch, but to be honest, I really really don't like Stitching in the ditch. I don't think it looks really nice, especially if you don't get it just right um, So I am gonna hand stitch using a whip stitch uh, The waistband into place and that will just give it a really nice kind of fancy schmancy couture kind of finish if that makes sense, so Yeah, I'm gonna Continue pinning along and I will meet you when I'm ready to start whip stitching. Okay, one more thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and clean up these edges really quick with my pinking shears, just cause, you know, it looks a little slapdash. Um, so I'm just gonna take my pinking shears and trim the edges just to give it a nice little zigzag, vintage flare, if that, if that you know, makes any sense. It's gonna be a drinking game, guys. Anytime I say, if that makes sense, <laughs> take a swig of whatever you've got by, close by. Again, making sure not to cut into your main fabric. So that's just gonna give it a nice little finish when you fold over your waistband. All right, so there we go. See, doesn't that look so much nicer? Yeah. You can even take like some grow grain ribbon. If I really wanted to, I could take some grow grain ribbon, stitch that so it looks, you know, a little nicer, but you know, I'm just gonna go with it and call it a day and all right, let's 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 get whip stitching. <laughs> All right, now all we have to do is hem the skirt and we are done. And I'm not gonna film the process of me hemming, but I am gonna talk about what I'm doing. I'm actually go doing my own brand of crazy when it comes to hemming. I'm not following the directions, but so I tried the skirt on and I think it's just a little bit too long for me. So I'm gonna deviate from the directions, uh, which I'm not even sure what they are at this point, but uh, I basically stitched a line 5 eighths uh, from the edge of the fabric, from the hem. And I'm gonna use that line as a guide to fold the fabric, the hem over onto the wrong side, press it and then fold it over again press it and pin it in place. Once I'm done pressing and pinning all the way around, I'm gonna take it over to the machine and stitch on the right side, 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And that will be my hem. Once you're done hemming your skirt, give it a final press with the iron and congrats, your Brumby skirt is finished. I hope you'll share it using the hashtag below so I and others can be inspired. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much again for participating in the sew along. I hope you had fun and learned something new and continue to have fun with the sewing. I'm Kristen, also known as Woolen Vine, and I will see you on the vlog. Happy making, and I will see you next time. Bye.